Last month, we launched a new spacecraft as part of a re-energized space program that will send American astronauts to Mars. And in two months, to prepare us for those missions, Scott Kelly will begin a year-long stay in space. So good luck, Captain. Make sure to Instagram it. Welcome back to The Ed Show. Astronaut Scott Kelly got a State of the Union send-off this week. As scientists push the limits of space exploration, Kelly will travel to the International Space Station this March for a year-long stay. Here's more on the historic mission. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Astronaut Scott Kelly is getting ready for a first-of-its-kind mission for NASA. Captain Scott Kelly is preparing to spend one year in space. Kelly has launched into space three times before. I had a desire to fly in space again. It's twice the length of a typical stay for an American on the International Space Station. The fact that I've flown a long-duration flight before gives me a little bit of perspective on what it's like. Our bodies are built for, you know, an Earth environment. But we don't really know what happens when you spend that much time in zero G. Kelly joins two Russian cosmonauts on a one year mission. If we ever want to send someone to Mars, we must first learn what it takes for someone to live in space for long periods of time. The goal of the one year mission is to study the physical and mental effects of space missions on astronauts. We know what the effect is for six-month mission. Bone loss, muscle loss, effects on our immune system. And the eyes can lose their shape, affecting vision. Uh, now we need to know what it is between six months and a year and what those uh, negative effects are and how to mitigate them. Scott's brother, Captain Mark Kelly, is no stranger to space either. I did four flights on the space shuttle, so I have 54 days in space. But this time, Mark's mission is back on Earth. Yeah, I asked the question when I was assigned to this one-year flight whether any study like this would be done. This was a unique opportunity to do a class of studies because we had one twin flying and one twin on the ground. They've collected data on us since, you know, 1995. The twin study will help NASA gain further insight into the effects of spaceflight on humans. Our genes were, when, you know, the eggs split, were exactly the same. We can study two individuals that have the same genetics, but are in different locations. They want to look at what the space environment has done to my RNA, DNA, proteins. With this study, we're in a position to look at how humans respond to these challenges and put us in a better position to explore far beyond Earth. If we understand our physiology better on Mars flight, you know, in the next decade or the decade after that is something definitely that we uh, we can accomplish. And joining me tonight here on The Ed Show is Captain Mark Kelly, retired NASA astronaut and shuttle commander. Captain, great to have you with us tonight. I, I, I'm fascinated by all of this space exploration. My dad was an aviator. He was an aeronautical engineer. And uh, we used to have great conversations about where this all could end up when I was a little kid. So I, I'm fascinated by this. First of all, uh, Captain, uh, is your brother in a position where every astronaut would like to be? I mean, this is, this is some pretty dangerous stuff, too. I mean, he's up there for a year going to be a guinea pig. What about that? Well, I can guarantee you, I mean, I know for a fact that he is not in a position where every astronaut would want to be. And it's because one year in space is a really long time. We've sent a lot of people for these long duration space flights that have been anywhere from four to six months in length. And they're challenging. I mean, they're challenging not only on the person in space, but on the families. And to spend a year in space is a huge commitment. Sure, there are other people that would love to do it, but um, it is a big commitment. How do you mentally prepare for something like this? You know, you try to get all your affairs in order on Earth, um, try to prepare your family and your friends and your loved ones for being gone for a long period of time. He leaves actually in about a month to go to Russia for this, you know, eventual launch in March, and he won't be back until March of 2016. He's going to spend two birth birthdays, mm. one off the planet uh, and one in, in Russia or Kazakhstan. So, I mean, there's a lot you have to do. I mean, you got to make sure your electric bill is going to get paid. Somebody's going to take out the garbage. I mean, these are things that, normal, you know, you normally don't have to think of that he's had to prepare for. How much are we going to learn? Now, you, you of course, have been uh, 54 days in space during four missions, and I believe the longest we've been up there is like six months. 
But to go that full year, how much more are we going to learn and how critical is this going to be for us to be able to go to Mars sometime? Well, we hope we learn a lot. I mean, that's the idea behind doing this. I mean, we're looking at, you know, how the irradi radiation affects his genes and the DNA and the telomeres and, you know, what this does to our immune system. We have issues with the optic nerve with people spending a long time in space and things like arterial sclerosis. If we're going to go to Mars one day, we have a pretty good sense right now of what it's going to take from an engineering standpoint. You know, what kind of things do we need to build to do that kind of mission. But what we don't know is how that long-term effect of being in space and then eventually on the surface of Mars and then coming back, what's that going to be like on the human body? So this is, you know, an incremental step from six months to a year to try to learn more about, you know, how, the, how this is going to affect the, the physiology of an astronaut. Mm -hmm. Is your brother excited about this? He's excited, you know, at the same time, it's, um, it's like I said, it's, it's a big commitment. It's going to be challenging. You know, astronauts usually and cosmonauts usually start to have, you know, some, some bigger challenges about the four month point in space. You know, I know for him, the last time when he flew six months, you know, I, I could, I could sense that he was getting ready to come home. You know, we don't know if that's because it's two thirds into the flight or is there something about, you know, that four month duration. So there's a little anxiety, but certainly there's a lot of excitement. I mean, there is nothing more fun than launching on a rocket and spending time on the space station. Uh, Captain Kelly, when are we going to be on Mars? And does this mission really determine that timetable? You know, I wanted to be the first person to walk on Mars. When I was in high school, I remember thinking about that. Wouldn't that be a great thing to do? Well, it's not going to be me. But, you know, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that the fir first person to walk on the planet Mars is alive today. I can't tell you when that's going to be. It's probably not going to be within 10 years. Could it be within 20 years? I think that's very possible. Captain Mark Kelly, great to have you with us. All the best to your brother, and thanks for all you've done for the country and the mission that you're on day to day. Thanks so much, sir. I appreciate your time. Coming up, what a shift in Saudi leadership could mean for oil prices. And America's pastime could take less time. I'll explain to the two-minute drill. Taking your questions next on Ask Ed Live. Stay with us. We're right back at the Ed Show.